Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're going to be installing a Kurt trailer hitch on a 2012 Subaru Outback. Installed on the Subaru, the hitch looks really nice. In fact, it just has the receiver tube opening hanging down as it uses the bumper support to mount up the hitch. So you get a nice clean look and a little bit more added ground clearance than having the rest of the hitch hanging down. Now it is a steel construction, so it's gonna be heavy duty. It also has a really nice black powder coat finish, so it's gonna hold up to rust and corrosion over time and still look good. Now this is a two inch by two inch, which is gonna be awesome for a lot of different accessories, whether it be your cargo carriers, your bike racks, or even a small trailer. If you are using the trailer feature, you're gonna see this is a rolled style safety chain loop. It's gonna be nice and open, allowing you to put larger style clevis hooks on, or just standard hooks. Also, you'll notice there is a 5 8 hitch pin hole, and that's gonna allow you to put your accessories in your hitch and lock them in place with this pin. Now, this does not come with the hitch, a lot of times your accessories that you buy will have one included, but if you don't have one or you'd like a locking option, we do sell those here at eTrailer. Weight capacities for this hitch are gonna be pretty good for the Subaru. Now your tongue weight is gonna be 600 pounds, and that's gonna be the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So you can think maybe a bike rack with your bikes loaded up or your cargo carrier, basically that weight that's pushing down. Now you also have a gross trailer weight of 4,000 pounds, and that's gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. Now it's important to check your vehicle's owner's manual to see what the vehicle is actually capable of and compare those numbers with the hitch. Between those two, you wanna take the lower one just to be safe. An important measurement to be taking is from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point on the rear fascia. And that's gonna put us at right about two and a half inches. And that's important to note for when loading up accessories to make sure that they don't make contact with the rear fascia or determine if you need maybe a tilt feature on a bike rack to open up your rear hatch. Now something else you're gonna to want to measure is gonna be the ground clearance. So from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground is 15 inches. And that's gonna be a decent amount of clearance to get you where you need to be but when loading up accessories, sometimes they can hang a little bit lower, or if you drive up an incline, get close to the ground. So keep that in mind if you're going to maybe a rougher terrain, or if you're driving up an incline. Now installation of the hitch is a little bit difficult in the fact that you're gonna have to remove the rear fascia, and you are gonna have to trim a little bit and remove your bumper impact bar. Don't let that scare you off though, because I'm here to walk you through the steps, and we'll get this hitch installed. To begin our installation, we're gonna be opening the rear hatch. So to put the hitch in, it's gonna actually sit behind, behind the bumper impact bar. And so we're actually gonna to have to remove the rear fascia. Now it seems a little bit scary, but we're gonna start slowly, step by step to get this off and we'll get the hitch installed. We're gonna go ahead and remove these plastic pins here. Now they have a little Phillips head screwdriver here and that collar will turn sometimes with it. So if you have a flat head or you can even use your finger there, you're just gonna wanna get a little bit of gap like that, and then this will simply pull out. Go ahead and do that with the next one. As you can see, they're a little tricky and they kinda of pop back in, but if you can get a flat head or a trim panel removal tool underneath that, it should make it pretty easy. So now this panel should pop off. Again, if you need to, you can use your trim panel removal or a small flathead. There's a little tab here with it. You can see that you can actually pry on that and that should pop out. You're gonna wanna keep this, set it aside for later installation. We're gonna be removing the two screws that are holding the tail light in. So you can either use a large Phillips or a 10 millimeter socket and it should work all the same. Now I recommend there's gonna be a lot of hardware coming off and to make sure that it all goes back the right way, you're gonna to wanna to keep these organized, whether you use a cup or a pan or anything, just to make sure that you don't lose any of your hardware. 
I use a muffin tin and I put some magnets underneath it and that way I can section out where all my hardware came from and keep it nice and organized and not falling out. So now we're gonna pull our tail light out. Now you're gonna to wanna to put pressure and kind of pull straight back from here and also kind of bump here. And if you need to, if you have a plastic trim removal tool, you can actually kind of pry on that, but you should be able to wobble this loose. Now don't pull too hard, because as you see, you're gonna have your plugs on your taillights here. You're gonna see the, your three plugs going into your bulbs. Simple quarter turn on each of them. We'll pop those out. Now set your taillight aside in a safe spot. Now that we're at this step, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the process on the passenger side of the vehicle. With the removal of the rear fascia, a lot of times putting it back on is gonna cause a little bit of potential for scratching because you have those plastic tabs rubbing against your paint. So to prevent that on the contact points, I'm gonna simply run just a little bit of painter's tape along this edge, and that way on reinstallation of the rear fascia, it's not gonna scratch that up, or it's gonna at least have a little protection on those contact points. So just following the body line, simply kind of run it right in that edge. And then just take your fingernail and run it down in there. And we're gonna repeat that for the entire rest of this on the top and bottom. On the removal of the rear fascia, we are gonna be separating it from the inner fender liner. And part of that is gonna be removing this mud guard here. So with a Phillips, you're gonna to want to loosen this up. Now this can be a little bit tricky just because the tire is there. So if you have a small ratcheting uh, wrench like this or a small ratchet that you can put a bit in that's gonna work really well uh, you might also be able to get a long one in um, from an angle but just take your time with this Okay, next we're going to move down to the plastic push pin. That's right below that. I'm just using my flat head, I'm gonna pop this up. If it doesn't go the first time, kind of just work your way around it. And then just turning it at a 90 degree angle, a lot of times will help kind of move that out. Got a little gap there. Sometimes these can be tricky. They get a little dirt and grime build up in them and they can be brittle too. So really just take your time on this unless you have extra plastic push pins because they can break if you're a little too rough with them. So I'm gonna take my trim panel removal tool and see if I can't get it out. There we go. So now we have one more underneath the mud flap that you'll actually see. It's on the back side here on the inside of the fascia and it's facing down. So we're gonna go ahead and pry that plastic push pin up. And you can see sometimes the bottom part stays in there. Pop that up. And you wanna slide those pieces together. That way you have them together for later. Now at the top corner where our fascia meets the rear quarter panel, we're gonna have a push pin that's facing up here. So at this angle, you're gonna just kinda take your screwdriver or your trim panel removal tool and pry that. Now sometimes these also can be tricky, but if you peel back a little bit inside liner here, you can actually get to the top part of the clip. And sometimes you can push down on that to initiate that first little pop. So now underneath the vehicle, in the center part of the fascia, you're gonna see these plastic push pins. There's a total of three. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. So 
So now we're gonna remove the rear fascia and I highly suggest before doing this, grabbing an extra set of hands because it can be a little bit cumbersome and you don't wanna drop your bumper. Also, you, you're gonna wanna set up a spot to put the bumper on. Um, something elevated or a platform that you can set it on is gonna be ideal or just in the grass or somewhere where it's not gonna get damaged. And the way to remove your fascia is simply going to be working from the outside towards the middle. And you have these plastic clips but it comes pretty easily. You just work your way through here. Once you get to this plastic part here where it's white, you're gonna see that it does kind of weave in and out here with clips. So the best way to do that is using a plastic trim removal tool. You can kind of pry up on that and just remove it from each clip. So let's see if we can't work our way down. Now you're going to want to be careful because obviously the plastic's kind of thin here and so prying up too hard may cause it to snap. Just take your time. Give a little pressure out. If you're having trouble with one you can maybe work to the next one and that's going to give it a little bit of more wiggle room. There we go. So we got a little movement there. Now I can kind of put pressure and that way when I pry up, it's actually going to move past that clip. Now we're going to work our way towards the middle. Now we have the fasteners off, but there's a lot of clips here underneath. And so the best way to do that is you're gonna to wanna to actually kind of give it a quick tilt back or a lift up, and you should start to see them release. Again, this is kind of a tricky process sometimes, so take your time. There we go. So don't get too far and don't pull too fast because sometimes you do have any electrical connections hooked up to your vehicle, depending on your trim. But we have this off, we're gonna set this in a safe spot. We're gonna remove our foam here on our bumper impact bar and set this aside. Now we're gonna be able to see we have 14 millimeter nuts here on studs. So there's a total of four. And luckily for us, there is holes in the impact bar. So with an extension, we're gonna be able to get to those. Now you're gonna to wanna to loosen them up and you can take three of them off, but I highly suggest leaving one of them on there with just a couple threads and that way it's not falling off while you're working on the other side. You're also gonna to wanna to hold on to your hardware as we'll be reusing these for the install of the hitch. So now I have them all removed and I just have my loose ones hanging on so I can push against the bumper and it's gonna hang on those studs. I'll take the one off and now the other. And now we can pull this off. Now don't go too far with this because we'll be putting this back on. Before our hitch can go in place, we need to bend this little tab here. And what we're gonna do, pretty easy, just Grab a pair of channel locks or pliers and just kind of grab far back and bend it straight up. Now if you have a hammer, you can simply hammer that in. Make it nice and flush. So now we're able to put our hitch in place and they're just gonna slide over those studs that the bumper impact bar was on. Now while holding this in place, you can put your impact bar back on right over it. Once you have those both up, have your ha hardware handy, and you're just gonna want to hand tighten a few on there just to keep this in place.
we're going to want to go ahead and tighten this down. Now you don't have to get too crazy because we are going to go back with a torque wrench to make sure it's at the proper spec. Now that we all have them tightened down, we're going to take our torque wrench and torque these down to the specifications in the instruction manual. Now if you don't have a torque wrench, we sell them here at eTrailer or you can rent them from an auto parts store generally. But you're going to want to make sure to do this step to make sure that it's not too tight but also not going to come loose over time. With our hitch, it's going to create a little bit of clearance issue on the bumper. So you're going to be trimming a section out here based on the, what the manufacturer recommends. Now there's a few different ways you can do this. I First off, I would say mark this out. It's going to make it a lot easier to know that you're following a good line. You can use shears. Uh, you can also use, if you have a cutting wheel or an electric cutting tool, you can use that. Just be careful. And then I'm going to go back with the file and clean these up. The diagram is in the instruction manual and generally it's pretty good rule of thumb to get you close. You may need to do a little bit of additional trimming just to fine tune it to your vehicle. But my rule of thumb is always go a little bit less and you can always trim more. After cutting, be careful that some of this plastic can get pretty hot, but once it cools down, you can break off the big pieces, but you're gonna to wanna to take a file and kind of run this over to make sure that's all smoothed out. This is one of those steps, take your time and make it look good because this will live on the outside of your vehicle. I'm gonna kind of just mock this up and make sure that it does clear. It looks wide enough. So before installing it, again, make sure that it is gonna clear. And it looks like we'll be okay. So with your extra set of hands, you're gonna to wanna to put your rear fascia back on. Putting the rear fascia back on is gonna be a little bit easier. You're gonna to wanna to just kinda of set these tabs in place and kinda of work it over the plastic. You may need an extra set of hands still, but you can do it by yourself. So once it's all lined up properly and sitting where it needs to, you can go ahead and work your way from the middle out now. You should hear some audible clicks on the center there. And then work your way to the white plastic. Now we'll work on our sides here. And you're gonna see these tabs here. You're gonna want that on the outside of that plastic. So again, you can kind of push the fascia and kind of get those in place. Also make sure that your fender liner here is tucked in where it needs to be. Now we've gone ahead and put everything back in place and everything buttoned up. Now I will say you might want to remember to put your foam that goes on the impact bar on before putting the fascia on. I learned the hard way and forgot to do that. So I had to pull the fascia back off. So remember that step and it's gonna save you a lot of headache and time. Other than that, you're simply gonna put your taillights back in place, the plastic bezels that go onto them, and you're ready to use your hitch. And that was a look and the installation of a Kurt trailer hitch on a 2012 Subaru Outback. Thanks for watching.